My name is Marcus Childress, and I'm an investigative counsel for the Select Committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the United States Capitol. What do you want to call him? Give me a name. Give me a white name. White supremacist and right like me to condemn? White proud supremacists boys. and right proud, proud boys. boys. Stand back and stand by. Uh, after he made this comment, Enrique Terrio, then chairman of the Proud Boys, said on Parler, standing by, sir. During our investigation, we learned that this comment during the presidential debate actually led to an increase in membership from the Proud Boys. Would you say that Proud Boys numbers increased after the stand back, stand by comment? Exponentially. I'd say tripled, probably. On December 19th, President Trump tweeted about the January 6th rally and told attendees, be there, we'll be wild. Many of the witnesses that we interviewed were inspired by the president's call and came to D.C. for January 6th. But the extremists, they took it a step further. They viewed this tweet as a call to arms. Now, this just one of the many pieces of evidence presented tonight on day one of the January 6th hearings on Capitol Hill. We have team coverage for you tonight with CBS 4's Joe Gorcho in the studio with reaction from our local lawmakers. But first, we go to Natalie Brand standing by in Washington, D.C. live with a recap of tonight's hearing. Natalie. Hi, Elliot. Tonight was the select committee's opening statement as it begins to make its case to the American public. Chair of the committee, Benny Thompson, in his opening remarks said that January 6th was the culmination of what he called an attempted coup. And he also talked about the historical significance of the moment, saying that January 6th and the lies that led up to it have put two and a half centuries of constitutional democracy at risk. In a rare primetime hearing, the Select House Committee investigating the January 6th Capitol attack began laying out what it has learned so far. Donald Trump oversaw and coordinated a sophisticated seven-part plan to overturn the presidential election and prevent the transfer of presidential power. The committee revealed video never before seen by the public. I am not allowed to say what's going to happen today because everyone's just going to have to watch. As it played, tears flowed for Officer Harry Dunn, who helped defend the Capitol, and Sandra Garza, the girlfriend of Officer Brian Sicknick, who died the day after the attack. What I saw was just a, a war scene. The panel Things also heard testimony really from U.S. Capitol Police Officer Caroline Edwards, who suffered a traumatic brain injury that day. I mean, I saw friends with blood all over their faces. I was slipping in people's blood. I just remember that moment of stepping behind the line and just seeing the absolute war zone that the West Front had become. The committee has interviewed around 1,000 witnesses, including some of former President Trump's family. But several of his allies have fought subpoenas, including House GOP leader Kevin McCarthy. And let's be honest, it is a smokescreen for Democrats to push the radical agenda. Last May, Senate Republicans blocked the creation of a nonpartisan committee that would have given both parties subpoena power and delivered a report by the end of 2021. Instead, the House Select Committee's next hearing is Monday, Weston, with several more this thank month. You for sharing your footage. Now, in other new information revealed tonight by committee vice chair Liz Cheney, she said multiple Republican congressmen sought presidential pardons from the White House for their roles in attempting to overturn the election. This select committee includes Florida member Stephanie Murphy of Central Florida. And again, the committee has scheduled at least three more hearings for next week alone with testimony expected from former Vice President Mike Pence's then chief legal counsel. Elliot. Thank you for that update from Washington. Now